in the Grisha trilogy, the first book being Shadow and Bone. I have a video discussing this one, I'll link it down below if you're interested. I don't think I like Legion Storm as much as I liked Shadow and Bone, it's hard because I don't think there's a huge difference in them, like I think I would give this one also a 7 out of 10. You know what, maybe even a 6.5. It was hard because I was enjoying myself while reading it for a fair chunk of the book. I wouldn't say all of the book, I'd definitely say there were some parts that for me were kind of slow. It did have a very strong filler vibe to it. 6.5 might be harsh, but then I didn't enjoy it as much as Shadow and Bone, and Shadow and Bone would give it 7 out of 10. And I won't go as far as to say that I disliked this one. I think I'm gonna talk spoilers about this book now, I don't really have anything else to say about it. If you've yet to read Season Storm, I recommend you leave now. Goodbye. Mal in this one, man, was he annoying. <laughs> there's a there's a big conflict between the setup between Alina and Mal because he doesn't understand her power and it was very apparent in this one. How he kept saying like we're destined for different things, Claudia didn't want to be there, he kind of blamed Alina for her power. She's making the right call, I thought, lead the second army, like she might not feel like she's very prepared for it or whatever, but she's right, she's the only one who can stand against the Darkling, it has to be her, and Ma was kind of resenting her for that and kind of blaming her, and blaming her for wanting the power, like when he said, if you could take away the power, would you, and she was like, never, and I guess it's kind of her fault because she's not explained this to him properly, I guess, but how weak she is without her power, like it's a necessity, without it she was like nothing, and he could say, yeah, but you had me, he wasn't treating her that way and now she belongs somewhere and she's become so much stronger as a person i mean she's always been quite feisty it was just really sad to see this of mal because he i felt like a very happy go lucky easy person in terms of like ships and stuff see they fell really far apart in this one so i'm hoping that that means their ship is dead and, and sunken and, and stuff but alina still wants to be with mal i think i think she still loves him and i think he i don't know if he feels the same way i'm scared of him hurting her i don't think he's what's good for her i have a really bad feeling that they'll gonna end up together regardless of just because they were meant to be when she found him fighting i was so appalled and he kissed zoya and he was like what do you expect i just they're fighting. I was always on Alina's side. Like, I wanted her to see her own worth more so that she could argue back with him better because he was not- he was not acting okay. It was not okay. Going to the ship situation though, I guess we have three options. Like this love triangle kind of got complicated because we have the Darkling. Is the Darkling still a contender? I would have said no until the end when she went with him and for a second she had me fooled. But even so, I think there's something, some quality that he has that she just submits to and I don't know if it's this whole like calls to like thing. It doesn't feel like she hates him as much as she should. I don't think we can rule him out as a ship though. I was expecting him to redeem himself more. He wasn't really here in this one, and so everyone always raves about the Darkling. I don't I don't get it, because to me he's awful and like I know he's charming and I really enjoyed him in the first book, don't get me wrong. I can't I can't see it. I don't I wouldn't go as far to say that I by any means like him. I do feel like the lines of him were kind of a little murkier in this one. The problem is is we can't trust him and if we were to sit down and find out what he wants and why he wants it like his motives and stuff because what he wants the peace thing it's not bad i think we all want that and i think he's the only one that's kind of striving for it it's the fault that's the thing and a lot of what he said in this one and it had me second guessing things so i still think he's a possible ship i don't ship that ship <laughs> the last one nikolai i loved nikolai he was by far my favorite part of this book he was he's the only character in these books so far that's made me laugh out loud like Genya's was kind of funny but she wasn't really in this one but Nikolai I laughed out loud a few times and Nikolai I loved him so much and I really hope I hope they get together I have a really bad feeling that it'd be her Mal but I want it to be her Nikolai I feel like it's pretty well set up in this one that it could be Nikolai like how he almost kissed her by the lake and he's so respectful of her as well and he's respectful of her power it would just be so good for her he's like the balance between the darkling and mal where mal just has like not enough respect for her and doesn't understand what she is and then the darkling who's gonna push her to be all powerful maybe understands her a little too well Nikolai's right in between like he respects her like he said he's not gonna kiss her while she's still thinking about Mal and likes her friends He's just he's what's best for her and I think he could make her happy if she would just she would just let it I really I really really hope 
they get together. I think they I think it's a strong possibility. I do. She could be Queen of Ravka and it would work so well. And like that's the best way to blend Grisha and men together. And that's ultimately what we need. Nikolai and, and Alina both want this. They both want Grisha and men to work together and they both agree that that's the way forward. Even with when Nikolai was Strummer Strumhound, Strumhound, I don't know how you say his name. But I'm still like, okay, he's my favourite character. I hope he sticks around. He's the best one here by far. So she gets captured by the Darkling and back to Ravka they go. It didn't last very long they're a great escape and when the dark one was talking to her it did seem like he genuinely wanted what was best for Ravka and the way he was kind of blaming her like well if you just listened like you keep betraying me and it did feel like we're not getting the full story maybe what he wants is, is right it didn't have me questioning things I don't think what he wants is right but it's close it's murky I really wanted more like I was hoping she kept getting those weird glimpses of her which I guess is the color ultimately I was wondering if it had something to do with the bite but maybe it's both. I think there was missed opportunity there for them to actually converse and I think he could be taunting her more. Like it was creepy, don't get me wrong. I feel like he's not understood well enough or maybe there's not as much depth to him as, as I think. Those shadow people, things, they were creepy as all hell. We need to find a way to destroy them that's not just completely relying on Alina and the cut. And I guess those mirror things could have done it and it was really exciting when they got them to work and i loved that scene of course a stupid mal had to ruin it we need something on the go we can't just rely on those big mirrors and obviously they they didn't work they came crashing down and we didn't have anything against them the cut is like one single blow she can't just keep chopping at them it's not gonna get them very far so we find out that the fold is in fact still expanding and that the apparat had gone into hiding apparat 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 He's in hiding and he's telling everyone that she died and was reborn and he's gathering some kind of army. I don't know how to feel about him. We interact with him very briefly and I don't know whether to trust him or not. He's so murky. He's a very interesting figure as well. I don't know if he actually believes that she's a saint or not. Like he's a religious man. But does he have some power where he can see the future? Like the way he talks about things, it feels that way sometimes. And it kind of feels like he's on her side here. And obviously the army burst in at the end and saved them. So it's a good thing that he's around. Saying to Alina the Apparat said, you are come to us at last. There was the hummingbird section, which was really nice when they first started flying. I really struggled imagining it. I couldn't envision it at all. And then I Googled it. And there was a there was a Reddit feed of everyone kind of trying to debate what it actually looked like. So it's not just me. The writing, I don't dislike it per se. It's, it's very readable and it's fine, but it is cliche at times and I've noticed telling rather than showing the little bit of calm I'd managed to pull together vanished I don't like writing like that very much where the character has to keep explaining how they feel and when we're in the fold they go Volcra hunting and Alina feels bad for them feels like she shouldn't feel bad for them she's like why do I feel bad for them but they were humans like I felt bad for them they can't help it and then they found that nest and they blew it up it saddened me. I wonder if there's any way we can reverse the Volcra situation. So the king allows her to leave the second army, although he doesn't really trust her. Back to the little palace and there's a kerfuffle. She nearly kills Sergei. Rage kept coming up in her in this one. It's either the amplifiers or it's Darkling and it's scary. I really hope she gets a handle on it. I think she can. It feels like something she can get a handle on. The way she needs the third amplifier, this greed. It's, it's the way it is. We're, we're too late now. We've gone too far. It's so, gonna be something that she has to get a handle on unless it ends up being that she joins forces with the darkling and she ends up like i can see this ending with her joining forces with the darkling and being with him and maybe kind of going bad or we walk the mori gray line but ultimately it's kind of okay it's just kind of also not okay like i don't know i think she can get a handle on it though i think that's where we're headed he says at one point that she doesn't know how to leave obviously out of her experience she's young and nikolai gives her all the tips and tricks and they keep coming back to her throughout when she goes to the little past that first time she seems to do a pretty good job seems pretty fair seems like she has a good poker face and i was really impressed throughout by how well she led i think she did an amazing job i think it's what she was made to do. I think she's really coming into her own in this role. I think she should be in a rough car with Nikolai. We see Bagra and the Darkling took her eyes and it was really sad. Wonder if we see her again. I wonder if she's alive. I like her. I hope she comes around to helping Alina eventually. We need to win her back. She again warns Alina of this greed and it comes up a lot throughout the book, the greed for the, the firebird and a lot of people say it in various different ways. Obviously none of them understand because none of them are her and I think she knows that it could be greed and she's scared of it but it's just so apparent like how naked her wrist is. It did say which wrist the, the scales are on better and that was, would be such an easier thing that would help I think people picture it just like I imagine it on her left wrist. The fact that it's left out like why 
just tell us which wrist it's on. And I, when they first started talking about the firebird and we th found out there was a third one, I was worried about the greed thing as well. And this section with Bagra's, I found particularly interesting. The second the words were out of my mouth, I wanted to take them back. A sick wave of shame washed over me. Had I really just threatened a blind old woman? Bagra laughed that rattling vicious chuckle. You're taken to power well, I see. As it grows, it will hunger for more. Light calls to light, girl. Her words sent a spike of fear through me. I didn't mean it, I said weakly. You cannot violate the rules of this world without a price. Those amplifiers were never meant to be. No Grisha should have such power. Already you are changing. Seek the third, use it, and you will lose yourself completely. Piece by piece. You want my help? You want to know what to do? Forget the firebird. Forget Morzova and his madness. I shook my head. I can't do that. I won't. She turned back to the fire. Then do what you like, girl. I'm done with this life, and I'm done with you. Like calls to like was like one of the Grisha theory in the first one and it, it's a big thing in here. It comes in with the Darkling as well because her and the Darkling powers are supposedly similar. When she said it in the fold the first time, how she felt connected to the fold, I assumed it was the bite, but I'm wondering if it's more than that, if because they're like antitheses of each other, they're the only people like each other, that might also be a reason why, or if it's just the color, or if it's just the bite. Either way, they definitely have a, a, a strong connection. The fact that I'm a little confused as to what it is isn't great. I, don't, I think it would be better to know why like calls to like in this situation exactly and we find out that Morzova created the amplifiers they're man-made they were meant to be used together if they're meant to be used together that's probably why she feels the need for the third one it's probably not greed or or power hunger it's probably something in them is what i was gathering maybe it's just the greed the more power she has the more she wants it and the more she will become like the darkling it's foreshadowing in there and Morzova was we think the first fabricator there wasn't there stories that he could also like wield water and fire so maybe he could do all of them is what i'm thinking like is there was there ever a grisha that could do all of the things the son of back hedrick destroyed all his journals because of the fold and the fold was an attempt to recreate the amplifiers so the darkling has had a big interest in these for ages which is weird because he himself is an amplifier so why did he want the amplifiers. Why did he want to make an amplifier? Mal and Alina have this big fight and the Darkling shows up right about to kiss her. Mal could tell she was hiding something and in the beginning he's like fine life you want. Why didn't she tell him about the Darkling? Like I can understand that he was already scared of her but the fact that he's scared of you means that you shouldn't probably be with him or that you need to change his mind. And so her hiding this from the minute she lies the first time obviously we know this isn't gonna end well. It's gonna go down badly and it does. And then they have that fight after she found him fighting the Grisha and she like shocked him or something and i don't really understand what happened there she didn't really understand what happened there nor did mal that was interesting we didn't come back to it at all i think it, it, it's a sign that they don't belong together personally oh and then she finally tells him what was happening when they go back to her bedroom and he just walks off he doesn't care and then she thinks mal starts kissing her in the night and obviously it's not mal obviously it's the darkling and she wakes up and she screams and no one comes and that scared the crap out of me goes off to the place with all of the pilgrims. Toila and Tamara end up having to save her and I loved how mad Toila was when they got back and like you were supposed to be on duty and you let her down. If you're not gonna protect her, if you're not gonna do her job then leave. Like why are you still here? I really loved Toila and Tamara, especially Toila. He was great and it saddened me when they like betrayed her with the apparat although they promised that they were fighting for her. So I think we can forgive them and I'm, I'm imagining we're gonna move on from this in the next one. Alina puts it together that she thinks the firebird is in her homeland. Coincidence? It doesn't feel like it. Like if it, if the firebird is really there, then either there's fate or Moore's over planned this, Darkland planned, like I don't, coincidence doesn't, no. I want something to go on there because much of a coincidence other than fate and religion. Are there any gods? I don't think we've talked about any gods, just saints. Were the saints all just Grisha though before Grisha were like a real thing? And then we have Nikolai's birthday dinner and Vasily talks about his plan. The joy of Virgin, Virginians. Freud, Freud, I have no idea how you say that. He's talking about his plan that he made with them, Vasily's plan. And Nikolai sees through it instantly he doesn't even hesitate he instantly knows what's wrong with it so mad at vasley for making the plan vasley vasley how would you say these names i was so worried that they were gonna believe vasley and then outlaw alina and nikolai or something and then her shoulder ached and i was like oh no 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 it was just like a one little line and we kind of flitted right past it shadow men things came bursting in and it was horrifying and vasley's arm gets ripped off and he dies pretty instantly 
at least we don't have to worry about him anymore. And then we have a little bit of a fight, but there's so few of them left, and there's so few Grisha, I think, left now. Very bleak, it's very dark, and it seems like all hope is lost. She gives herself over to the dark. I believed what she was saying, that she wanted to be with him, and it was the only way, and the power thing started to take over his power and made the shadow thing start eating them. I didn't see it coming. If she doesn't end up with the Darkling, then what are all these foreshadowings for? Mal comes back for her because they've known each other forever. Like, they have a really strong bond there, and I'm not saying they shouldn't be friends. I'm just saying they're not supposed to be together romantically. It was sweet that he came back for her. I want to know how Tamar and Toila came to be in league with the Apparat. I felt really bad for Genya and what happened to her. And we end with the Darklings now ruling, and he's trying to find Alina. We don't know what happened to Nikolai. I really, really hope he's alive. I think so. I don't think they could kill him off so early. And then we end with that end section, you know, the after section, and they're talking about how the boy shook his head. He knew Issa when he saw one. He was wrong, of course. The girl could tell from the way the upright watched her struggle to her feet. She heard it in each fragile thump of her heart. This place was no prison. It was a tomb. Better than anyone, she knew the power of things long buried. The girl touched the collar at her neck, the fetter at her wrist. So many men had tried to make her a queen. Now she understood that she was meant for something more. The darkling had told her she was destined to rule. He had claimed his throne and parts of her too. He was welcome to it. For the living and the dead, she would make herself a reckoning. She would rise. Meant for more than a queen? What's that mean? I'm glad what we end on a high note. She has power in her. I just, I think she's really powerful and I think she has potential. I don't love Alina per se, but I do like her and I do think she has a lot of potential and I hope she takes it. I'm excited to see this finish because not a ton happened here. It was a lot of us getting ready to face the Darkling. I wonder if we're gonna find the Firebird. I wonder if she's gonna accept the Firebird or if she's gonna listen to the warnings. I think she's gonna end up with it. How she ends up handling the power, I don't know. Because that saying that she was meant for more than to be a queen would suggest that she might be able to handle it. That is everything I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing morning, afternoon, evening, slash night. My name's Shade. I hope I see you again next time. Goodbye. I have a video just... Uh. Alina puts it together that so many barking dogs everywhere. Although he, he's, I, uh, my eyes are so watery today. I have no idea why. About it, I think I'm going into the. Uh, bleh, bleh, bleh.